Margot Hale, NCAT's Southeast Regional Director, visits with U.S. Senator John Bozeman of Arkansas. Senator Bozeman is the new ranking member of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Margot has known the senator, who is a longtime supporter of NCAT's ATRA Sustainable Agriculture Program and NCAT's Arm to Farm Program for Veterans, since she was a child. Margot and Senator Bozeman visit about a range of issues affecting small farmers, and Margot begins a conversation by asking the senator about the role agriculture has played in his life and the life of his family. Well, thank you again for agreeing to visit with me. I know we get a chance to talk on occasion and, um, you know, I, I get to visit with your staff quite often. So I just really appreciate you taking the time. I know in a really busy, busy season and a, a very busy year. And um, we thought this would be a great opportunity for some of the clients that we work with at NCAT and the ATRA program to get to hear from you and um, hear some of your thoughts on, on some of the things going on in the agricultural world. And um, I wanted to start with, if this is okay, if you would share your personal connection to agriculture. I know a little bit, but um, I think folks would really appreciate knowing you know, why you are so connected to agriculture and you know, why it's been an important part of your service. Well, I grew up in Fort Smith and Fort Smith is, is not, you know, a big, t it was a smaller town then than it is now and still is not a, a really big town. I live in Northwest Arkansas and, and uh, uh, really got interested in the cattle business and got involved there. I'm, I think I'm the only uh, senator or congressman that has an AI certificate. <laughs> the bull at our place for several years. And so I really got involved in that. And uh, my girls were all state record book winners in 4-H. And so uh, it really, really was a big part of our lives, getting to know the, uh, all of the wonderful people that are involved in agriculture. And, and then again, my girls being a very, uh, very important you know, piece of our family life. So they showed cows and steers and, you know, the whole bit. So yeah. uh, as a result, it's something that uh, we enjoy. And I understand the cattle business. And then again, being around the poultry business, wasn't really that exposed to, I became a congressman and then was more exposed to our row crops and, and all that mm -hmm. they do. And so I've really enjoyed learning that aspect of agriculture. We, we're so diverse in Arkansas. You know, we've got our row crops, we've got our specialty crops, uh, and then we've got so much timber. And so yeah. it's really a little something for everybody. It really is. I, I, I don't think lots of people realize how diversified Arkansas agriculture is. I know we're known for our row crops and poultry and rice. But, you know, we have so many small farms and small diversified farms. You mentioned your herd of cows. You know, I think um, Arkansas ranks near the top when we talk about beef cattle production. We have a lot of, a lot of farmers raising beef cows and, and forages across the state. So we are diverse and it's, it's fun to hear your, your personal connection um, to yeah, our- we do. And, and it's really interesting because we do have we do produce a lot of cattle you know, in the state, but when you look at the size of the operations, uh, they're small. Yeah. So we've got some large operations, but but for the most part, you know, many of those are small. And I know that the, you know, you all are so helpful to the smaller producers that, you know, can't afford many times to, to hire the people to come in and do this and that. And so regarding forage and all of that with, you know, with the cattle industry, but, but again, you know, being so helpful to uh, producers, regardless of what they're producing, uh, much of Arkansas is a small scale. Yes. And one thing I, I wanted, just following on that vein of, of small scale, um, in an interview I heard you do a while back, you mentioned local food production and how small scale farmers, you know, that's going to be a big part of our agriculture going forward. And so I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that and how you see all of these small farmers, you know, not just in Arkansas, but across the country, how you see their role in, in our, our food supply, our local food production and agriculture as a whole. 
Well, I think it's really important. I think it's a great opportunity for uh, our smaller producers or people that want to get into into farming. When you look at the cost of, if you wanted to do things on a large scale, it's staggering. Uh, the average age of our farmer now is late 50s, uh, but but the amount of uh, capital that you'd have to come up to, to start a major thing, is, it, it is staggering. The good news is with the support of our farmer's market programs, people like you all that do such a great job in, in helping with the educational aspect, helping people do best practices so that they can be profitable. And then the other thing that's happening is, is that our, our lo local uh, groceries, uh, local entities like that, they, they have bought into the fact that it's to their advantage to buy local produce, uh, local things, uh, that cuts transportation cost. We're all concerned you know, about keeping the environment clean mm -hmm. so you've got less carbon footprint in that regard. So there's all kinds of uh, reasons that that is a, a good thing. Uh, we have to make it so, so we have to help them so that they're, uh, you know, it, it's great to have the want to, but you've got to be successful. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's the other side of it is making, uh, doing all that we can to, to, to help those opportunities uh, and be real opportunities in the sense of, of allowing people to make a, you know, make a living, supplement their income. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know something that small farmers, large farmers, everyone this year has dealt with is the impacts of COVID. And, and you know, you're mentioning the local grocery stores wanting to buy local produce. I think we saw that so much this spring with, you know, disruptions in our supply chain and, and folks were really, you know, going to their local farmers to get, to get food because it, it wasn't at the grocery store. No, you're exactly right. The supply chain didn't break, but it buckled. Yeah. And so I think we learned a lot from that. What we will be doing once we get, we're even, we're starting now, the look backs, you know, seeing uh, where we had real problems, how we can shore up those things in the future. Mm -hmm. With on-time delivery, it's such that, that we really, we don't have warehouses like we used to uh, the warehouses are the trucks on the road mm -hmm. and everything is, is very, very efficient. But if you have a glitch in that, then, then you have empty shelves. And that's the number one fear of Americans is going to the grocery store and not being anything in there. We take that for granted because yeah. of the people that you work with and all of our great producers. And then not only the producers, but all that it takes to get those, those shelves stocked. And uh, those, those folks have really stepped forward and done a tremendous job. But, but no, I, I think that uh, anything we can do to uh, make it such that, uh, that, that we can provide locally, that does help the supply chain going forward. And, it, and the other thing it does is it, it creates competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to value add products because they're you know, some specific variety or they're organic or the list goes on and on. All of those are good things in allowing our producers uh, to get paid, uh, you know, what the products were. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, obviously the COVID situation has been horrible, but we did see it, uh, it, 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 you know, it gave some opportunities to some of our local producers to, to sell directly to customers. Of course, you know, they also lost markets with their restaurant contracts or farm to school contracts or, you know, some of those, some of those sales. But, you know, we heard over and over just outrageous demand for those local products. So I hope that, I hope that consumers continue that demand for, for our local food production and for all our farmers across the country. And you're right, we definitely saw some areas that we need improvement and could definitely help um, help those local food systems. I know as a livestock producer, the access to small scale livestock processing, you know, has been a huge issue across the board. We see livestock producers who just can't find a place to get their animals processed. So 
I think, you know, identifying some of those things and, and figuring out ways to improve that are, are great. No, I, I agree with you totally. And there's things that, that we do have to step in and help with that. That might involve the inspection system, you know, all of these kind of things. So we're going to be uh, working with our states, working with uh, entities, people that want to get involved in that business, uh, which would help with the supply chain. And then again, it, it increases competition. And so uh, I think that's a good thing. I was in a, a school uh, not too long ago where they actually, part of their uh, vocational education in high school, uh, you know, had started a uh, processing plant there. And so we're seeing that uh, in some of the vocational schools across the state. I know that the, the state's going to be working hard on this. The federal government's going to be working. Uh, so those are good things. Yes, very good. And I love to hear that we're training, training youth on some of these skills that are, are hard to come by. And we definitely need more butchers and, and folks with those skills. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Well, I know something else um, in visiting with you over the years and with your staff and just your involvement with obviously the Senate Ag Committee is worrying about farmers' economic um, status and, and knowing how hard it is to be a farmer these days and, and the economic side of things. And, you know, the, the picture isn't all that rosy when we look at the, the farm economic stats. Um, so just curious as to your, your thoughts on that and, and going forward, what, you know, what can we do to help our farmers be more economically viable? Well, I think that the federal government really has stepped in, and, and this has been a very bipartisan effort to get them through a very difficult time. When you look at the, the dollars, when you look at farm income, net farm income, probably 37, 38% uh, was as a result of the government program. That's good, you know, that's getting us by in tough times, but that's not sustainable. You can't do that forever. Some of our bankers, which our farmers, you know, rely on on a yearly basis, annual basis, are nervous in the sense that, you know, they don't know for sure that those programs are continuing. None of us do. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, with the debt and the deficit, dollars are going to get tougher. So our farmers have been uh, really uh, had a tough situation because of the trade issues that we've gone through. That's looking much better now uh, in the sense that the Chinese are, are back on board. They're buying a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, all kinds of things, which is all kinds of things ag, which is a good thing. And, and they understand too that, that we're not going to be playing games. You know, that we're not going to be held hostage if they do or don't. We're going to hold them accountable. And that's a good thing. Uh, the other thing is just low commodity prices across the board. And so um, we are going to be working very, very hard, working with the economist, looking at the next farm bill. Mm -hmm. What do we do you know, to, to make it such that we can uh, shore up um, the ability of our farmers to make a living? And yeah. some of that will rely on technology. We're blessed, that, you know, the, the research aspect of, of the Things have been great. <clears throat> We've got the ability now to know the moisture content in our soils, to know that if we're giving them too much water and not enough, many times it's too much, that's wasteful. Mm -hmm. Same is true of pesticides. And so what that does is it decreases your input cost, which is very important, yeah. great for the climate and all of that. And then there's times when you're not giving enough. So you apply a little bit more you know, fertilizer or water or whatever, that increases your production. So that technology is great. One of the things that we need to make all that work though, most of it's relying on broadband. And so as a result of that, uh, the COVID situation has brought such tragedy in our country. I think one of the bright spots is the recognition that uh, in the society we live in now, we need to be wired. Yeah. And so uh, it doesn't matter if we're telecommuting doing the calls like we're on now, you know, those kind of situations, uh, or telemedicine, which is gonna be great for rural America, yeah. or telelearning, all of these things. And then the, the 
production uh, of, of agriculture, really no matter what phase of it you're in, being able to utilize this technology that uh, makes things so, so very efficient. Lots of money is being spent. Uh, this, our various states are stepping up. We're in the process of allocating a lot more money in the future. So I think that's a real bright spot uh, going forward. Yes, and, and we saw with our farmers who were already connected, already had websites set up, those who were already prepared to do sales online, when COVID hit, they were able to just skyrocket with their sales. And those, those who didn't have that access were really hindered. So um, you're, you're right. with that and access. I'm glad you not only the production aspect, of, but as you say, the marketing aspect, which, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that, that, you know, sometimes we forget about. Yeah. Which is, you know, probably, uh, you know, the most important. Right. Yes. <laughs> Going back to those farm economics, we have to be able they, to sell what we grow. That's very important. You it and you don't have a market, you got a problem. Yes. Yes. So, and, you know, you're right, we spend a lot of time working with farmers to help them, you know, do business plans and look at the economics of what they're doing, identifying markets and figuring out how they can be profitable. And I appreciated your, your comments about lowering input costs. Obviously, something that we focus a lot on here at NCAT with our sustainable agriculture information is, is really how can we lower our input costs? How can we and figure out ways to do things, you know, better and smarter and in appropriate ways for the small scale so that our farmers can be more profitable. And we're always looking to, you know, increase our sales and, and find those niche markets and ways that we can get more for our products, but also we want to reduce our input costs. So that helps with our profitability as well. Very much. The other aspect, you know, we talk about uh, the importance of locally grown and, and opportunities there is with our schools, our institutions. And, Absolutely. And again, our restaurants, all of those things are, are besides the farmer's markets and, and going directly, uh, they understand that, that when you're, you know, if you're a restaurant and you're selling a, a lettuce or whatever the item is, uh, there's a huge difference in, in buying it locally, the freshness, as opposed to being picked, you know, two weeks earlier someplace else and about, uh, you know, the freshness is about to expire as opposed mm -hmm. to coming literally right out of the field. So, yeah. you know, with marketing and, and, you know, people are understanding this, they're developing, they, they're understanding the difference in the taste and texture. So there's, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Our schools also are looking for uh, the good, uh, particularly produce, uh, that, that can be off offered. And so I think we've got lots of opportunities in those areas also. Yes. And I, I know you are interested in, in schools and school nutrition. I've been with you and um, eating in a school cafeteria and visiting a school garden. And that is work that we are currently working on here at NCAT. Um, we have a project with um, FNS and we are developing some training curriculum for farmers so that they can be trained in how to access those farm to school markets. So, you know, that is another great opportunity for our farmers, uh, you know, good consistent market. And we all feel good when we are providing our kids with good, healthy local food. No, I agree. And, and you know, we just live in a different world now. And the opportunity that you give young people uh, through the different programs that allow them to experience uh, you know, from kindergarten on up, what it's about growing things, you know, where, where the appreciation of where our food comes from, uh, those, are, those are really good things. There was an article the other day, what was it? It was like 30 or 40 percent of, of people had never seen a cow or something. It was some astronomical, don't quote me on that, but it was yeah. some astronomical number. Of course, for us, you know, we that's that's almost unbelievable for us. Yes, but, you know it's that's the world that we live in now. Mm -hmm. So that's fine, but we do need to work around it and make sure that people do understand and appreciate uh, the men and women that work so hard 
to get that stuff in the in the grocery store or at the farmers market wherever they're purchasing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely right. We there's a a big gap between those the people producing the food and the people eating the food in a lot of cases. So anything we can do to raise awareness of our farmers and and all of the folks involved in the food systems who you're right are working so hard to supply our country with with wonderful good food. Well, in our last couple of moments here, um, looking forward, looking ahead, any, do you have any insights you can give me on the farm bill? It feels like we just finished a farm bill, but I know how things work and you guys are already thinking about it and um, probably getting to work on what's, what all is gonna be included in that. And, you know, in, in relation to some of the things we've talked about today, some of the local food aspects and direct marketing, are there, you know, any bits in the farm bill that will relate to those um, programs? No, very much so. And, and again, the world is changing. I think the post COVID world is going to be different than it was going into it, but I think it provides us a lot of opportunities. And so we're going to uh, get to work and very quickly start hearings about topics like this. Uh, see the areas that we need to strengthen, maybe some areas that aren't working, we switch into, <clears throat> into other things. We'll have to find out uh, where the uh, you know, incoming president or his uh, priorities are going to be, working with the new secretary of ag, those things. Traditionally, the Senate Ag Committee and the House Ag Committee also work together very, very well. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a very nonpartisan situation. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in agriculture, it's not so much where you get differences amongst the ag committee, it's more regional agriculture versus uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans. But mm -hmm. the, the thing you have to do is take care of everyone. And everyone really has been impacted. You, you look at, uh, maybe you're a catfish farm, you know, and, and somebody's got a small catfish farm and you can make a living doing that and you provided you know great you know here's here's the best practices for that you're rocking along well people don't generally buy catfish and eat at home no. they eat in restaurants yes and so all of a sudden all the restaurants are closed and mm -hmm. so uh, again there's lots of different aspects that we need to look at everybody's been hit hard the technology we need to continue working really hard. Uh, that's great for uh, the people that are producing. It's also great for the for the climate, you know, helping us keep our, our, you know, helping us keep the resources that we have. And, and nobody does a better job than that than the farm community. So, going to be you mentioned the animal production. You know, seeing if we could get a, more competition uh, regarding. Uh, that situation. So the list just goes on and on. Uh, so there won't be any, any lack of uh, material. I'm, I'm a guy that feels like that we need to continue with the present farm bill. It's a five-year commitment. Farmers need to know that, that it is a commitment. My concern is when you start opening those things up early, you start setting that precedent. Usually what, what's being uh, What's usually happening is they're trying to open it up so they can steal the money out of it because it's a big <laughs> amount of money and putting it in the roads or something else. And we've been able to, to push back on those things. But uh, we look forward to working with you and the great organization that you represent. Thank I've you. had the opportunity to be, to be associated with you all now for many, many years. You've got a great reputation. Uh, when I was actively involved in... Uh, you know, trying to trying to raise cattle and do a good job of that. You know, having having people like yourself, you know, that could offer advice. And, and, uh, you know, it's just you know that's that's worth so much. And uh, so certainly we would love to help you all any way we can. Also, I want to compliment uh, particularly you all and so many others on the arm to farm type things. You know, helping our veterans as they transition home. So many of them, uh, you know, would like to go into agriculture, but yeah. I think, you know, teaching them, you know, the tools of the trade, but probably most importantly uh, is helping with those business plans to help mm -hmm. people understand what they're getting into, what it's going to take, 
and, and sometimes things look a little easier than they are. <laughs> and preventing, you know, just making sure that they've got the resources in front end so that it can be successful. Yes, the, you're, you're right. And we so appreciate all the support you have given in CAT over the years, our ATRA program and Arm to Farm. You know, I've gotten to know many of your staff members through that program. And um, I know you, of course, are very interested in things that help our veterans, also being on the, the Veterans Committee. And um, I know your dad was in the military. So uh, we definitely appreciate that support. And you're right, veterans make wonderful farmers. And um, our job is to to help them navigate the processes of getting started and figuring out their business plans and getting them connected to the resources that are out there to help them. Well, we look forward to working with you in the future as, as we have in the past and appreciate the great job you're doing. And certainly, you know, I, I think, you know, we can look at spreadsheets and this and that, we can look at facts and figures here. There's no substitute for getting out on the farm. And I've had the opportunity you know, to do that with you and the various, mm -hmm. various things and so many others. Uh, so the, really the answer to these problems need to come from the ground up. Yeah. And so we're really gonna concentrate on being, uh, you know, uh, amongst the, the farm community and directly seeing uh, what they're facing right now. And, and that's different than what they were facing a few years ago. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's, I think, is really the keys to success. And we'll be working together with our friends uh, on both sides of the aisle to see if we can push things forward and, and uh, do all we can to support our farm community. We've got the, the uh, safest, cheapest food supply of any place in the world. We need to continue that. You can imagine, you know, you've got um, families that are working so hard just to make it. And what it does, you know, if you had a 10% or 15% increase in your food, food cost or whatever, or 5%, uh, you know, the, the single parents, the list goes on, people on fixed incomes. So really what we're talking about is it's great in the sense of helping those that would like to get into agriculture, those are in agriculture be successful, mm -hmm. but it's so, it's so important for our nation and it's something that we do so well, we take it for granted, but it's a lot of hard work and certainly people like you and so many others are an integral part of it. So give yourself a pat on the back. Well, thank you. And once again, just thank you so much for your support of our programs and support of farmers. And I love that you you said we need to hear from the ground up. And I know you, you do listen to farmers. I've been with you and and you're right, our farmers are, they're so innovative and such hard workers. Um, we, we have a lot to learn and they have great ideas that, that you know, my job is to help others uh, learn what our successful farmers are doing. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me. Uh, again, thank you for having us. Thanks. <laughs>